This is the continuation of the 3D tutorials, and this one will be over cameras. So in your tutorials file, start a new comp and call it 3D camera. So you can come down to the icon and click on that. And you can call this 3D camera. And to make sure, let's actually go ahead and put your last name and first initial at the beginning. So when you do output this, you will be able to tell whose it is. We want it to be the HDV HDTV 720 29.97 preset. That will make it 1280 pixels wide by 720 pixels high. And the frame rate will be 29.97. You want to make sure you have square pixels. Let's have a duration of five seconds and say, okay. Now you have nothing here. We've got on the action title save guides. And you can tell here's the action save, title save. This is the center. We have nothing in this comp. Now we want to have a layer new solid. And we'll make this solid dark blue and we'll have it be comp size. So let's get a good dark blue. Okay, that looks good. Don't want it too dark. We'd like it to be dark enough. There we go. To set it off. And now we want to have a, a layer that is a text layer. So you can either double click on the T or you can use layer new text. And you want to type your name. We want it to be large enough to work with and we want it to have a good solid outline. So let's go ahead and make it Helvetica bold and 90 pixels is good. White fill, no stroke. We want to convert both of these layers to 3D. So come down to the timeline and underneath the cube, 3D layer cube, click. So each of those is a 3D layer. Now we want to check our materials options. Let's select both and hit AA very quickly. And it brings up the material options. So for the name layer, you want to make sure that it casts shadows. So automatically it's set to off, turn that to on. And for the solid layer, it doesn't matter if it casts shadows, that's going to be our background, but you want to make sure it does accept shadows, and that is on. Okay, that's in good shape. We want to go to the text layer and set the position. So, text layer. We want to set the position, so type P, you got your three coordinates. You want to set the Z coordinate to a negative number. So let's set that to negative 200. Anything that's negative is closer to the viewer, and anything that is a positive number is further away from the viewer. And now, Let's add a spotlight. Layer, new, light. And make sure it's a spotlight. And let's set the intensity to 75%. Add the, or set the, the shadow darkness to 70%. And shadow diffusion, let's make that a little bit higher number 
So let's say 10%. Making sure that it does cast shadows. If this is not selected, it won't let you change these two settings. Make sure it casts shadows. But we did set the text to cast shadows. So we know once we turn this on, it will go ahead and cast shadows. Now, it's very dark because we only have the one light. So let's, two things, we'll get the light in, in position, we can give it a higher negative number. Right now it's negative 444, 444, so let's go to negative 700. And that will give it a wider area that it's lighting. And now let's go ahead and add an ambient light, and this will be your fill light. So, ambient light. Ambient lights do not cast shadows. And let's set the ambient light. We don't want it to be too bright, so let's set it to 50%. And say, okay. And that's a fill light. You see, it fills in a little bit. Let's say, Command S. to Make sure that we save our project at this point. So now, if we look at our two views, so we can see from above, you'll see that we have, light number two does not have a layer because it's ambient. That means there is much light everywhere in all directions coming from the ambient light. But this light, you can tell that it's set back here at a slight angle. That's how it does by default. And it is aimed at the point of interest, which is right in the center. So you can see the line we're showing you the point of interest. Here's our text layer. You can see that it's closer to the viewer. And then here is our background layer. Okay, so now we've got that set up. Let's deselect everything and Command S to make sure it's saved. Now we want to create a camera. So go to Layer, New, Camera. And here's the camera settings dialog box. This is a type of two node camera, which means it has a center of interest that it's going to be fo focusing on. And it also has a placement where the camera itself is. So you can keep track of where the camera is in relation to everything else as you move it around. That makes it easier for you to do, let's say, an orbit or some kind of a pan so that you will have the center of interest will be always in the same spot and just the position of the camera itself will move. Uh, there are presets. Uh, 50 millimeter is your average focal length. A 35 millimeter is a common wide angle lens. 135 millimeter is a common telephoto lens. But let's go with the default 50 millimeter. And we'll just leave all the other settings as they are. And the zoom value is going to equal the Z position in pixels, so the scale will not be affected. And we're not going to use depth of field yet, so just leave that off. Say OK. And now Command S again. So this is our camera, this is our light. So the camera is behind the light. And that's something to remember. Because if you have something that goes behind the light, but still in front of the camera, the camera will be able to see it because of the ambient light, but it will not be casting any shadows because it's behind the spotlight. So you must remember that. That's all, all important. Now, in order to do something interesting with the camera, I've got the camera selected. Let's go to Layer. Camera down near the bottom. Create Orbit Null. A null is a layer that has no object on it. It has nothing on it, but it has the settings for that layer in the memory. So it's basically it's just remembering a place. A place in time somewhere. It doesn't have anything. There's no object on that layer. We don't need to see it, so we can turn off the eyeball. 
But this null will control the camera. So let's press R. So select the null and press R to select rotation. And since it is a 3D layer, it has rotation X, Y, and Z. We don't want to use the orientation for this. We want to use the rotation. And we want to set the keyframe for Y. So making sure we're on frame zero, enable the keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch. And we want to set that to negative 60 degrees. Okay, so you see we have changed our position and you can see that Null has completely controlled the camera. Now we will go to the last frame, which is 429, and we will change this number to positive 60. So it's positive 60 degrees. And now we're looking from the other side. Command S. Now, we can do a RAM preview to see what's going to happen. And you see you have a nice, even, smooth rotation around your name. Okay, let's stop that. Go back to frame one. And command us to make sure it's saved. Now, let's make it look a little more interesting. And let's select the rotation. These keyframes are now selected, so we can go to the graph editor and now we can select these keyframes and we can change the speed of the keyframes the keyframe interpolation so we can select both of them and just choose easy ease which would be f9 or we could select each of them select each of them and Let's say I want to choose this one, and then I want to, since we're easing out of the station, we want to ease out. And then choose this keyframe. And since we're easing into the station, we want to easy ease in. And then go back, Command S and RAM preview again. And there you see how it looks much more interesting. It starts out slower, speeds up, gets to the middle, then starts to slow down.